Hello everyone, welcome to today's current affairs session of Civilspedia. The topics we are going to see today is International North South Transport Corridor, Pangolins, Bondi, Tane Creek Wildlife Sanctuary and with respect to editorial topic is National Security Act. The first one is International North South Transport Corridor. It is a multimodal route that connects through road, ship as well as the rail. Thereby it will connect the thereby it will helps to transport the freight goods and services through this India, Russia, Central Asia and Europe. Thereby it will give a comprehensive connection for these all the countries. And the recent news with respect to this INSTC is this Chabagar port. This Chabagar port is one of the important port in Iran. And apart from this port, the another port that is major port of Iran is Bandar Abbas port. The recent news with respect to this Chabahar port is the Bandar Abbas port has been sanctioned by US on this Iran. So this not trade much much of the countries cannot have a trade relationship with this Iran through this Bandar Abbas port. So this Chabahar port is one of the important alternative thing for the Iran to enhance their trade with other countries. So this Chabahar port has been invested hugely by Indian people. And this Indian government has made a much of the infrastructures with respect to this Chabakar port. And the Indian, this US has gave waving for this India to utilize this Chabakar port to, to enhance the trade relationship with Iran. So India says that Iran should not overemphasize this Chabakar port to have enhanced the trade relationship with many other countries. So because this may lead to US to put sanction on this port also. Thereby it will connect, it will disconnect the India to have uh, with the Afghanistan. So this India has asked the Iran to not to overemphasize the importance on this Chabakar port. That is the news with respect to this Chabakar port of INSTC. And apart from that, we will see what is this Chabakar port with respect to the prelims perspective. This Chabakar port has been located in this Gulf of Oman. And apart from this, India has already invested in a rail project that is connecting this Chabakar port with Sakedan of Iran. And from this Sakedan of the Iran, there is already a road that has been connected to Afghanistan. That is the area of Zala, Zaranj, Zalaram Highway. So thereby connecting this Chabakar port to Sagedan to this uh, Dalaram Highway. So it will have India to have access to this Afghanistan. Thereby it can, it need not to depend on Pakistan to reach the, have uh, goods and services to Afghanistan. So this will make India to bypass this Pakistan to access the Central Asian countries also. So thereby having this Chabahar port is one of the important crucial role with respect to this India and Iran relationship. And apart from this India-Iran relationship, this Chabahar port play a huge role with respect to have trans with respect to transit the goods to the Central Asian countries also. Because it will have lead to have uh, connect this Afghanistan and thereby it can lead to connect India with the Central Asian countries. So it can lead India to connect them many of the land locked Central Asian countries. So this Chabahar port plays one of the huge role with respect to this India because this uh, Chabahar port that is located in this Gulf of Oman that is very near to the Strait of Hormuz which is one of the important strait that is connecting having 20% of world oil things as moving to this uh, Strait of Hormuz only. So by having a Chabahar port at India's control will may have lead to a security, energy security for this India and it will lead to have India to access most of the natural gases from the Central Asian countries. And apart from this, this Chabagar port is one of the important counteractive to this China's Gwadar port that has been invested by China in this Pakistan. So this Chabagar port plays a huge role with respect to energy security and with respect to this security of other things, of maritime things for this India. And thereby it will connect this Arabian Sea becoming a one of the famous busiest port. So it will have much impact on this Mumbai highway, Mumbai um, port also. So it will lead to have enhanced this India's and Iran trade relationship and thereby have a comprehensive relationship with this Central Asia also. Why this US has give waving for this Chabahar port is US is trying to withdraw from this Afghanistan. So to stabilize the Afghanistan, this Afghan economy has to be developed. So to develop this Afghanistan economy, many other countries has to access this Afghanistan. The only easiest way to access this Afghanistan is through Iran only. So for having this uh, trade relationship with Afghanistan, thereby stabilizing this Afghanistan, US has gave waving for this Chabahar port so that India, China and India, then uh, Russia can easily access this Afghanistan and have a trade with this Afghanistan. So thereby it will stabilize Afghanistan as well as the Iran. So it will lead to reduce the terrorism activities also. Thereby it will give security to the whole world also. So that only US has gave waving for this Chabahar port. 
So this is the news with respect to this international north south corridor and with respect to this Chabahar port. And the next topic is pangolin. This pangolin is a shy type nocturnal mammal that is mainly feed on eating ants and termites. And the recent this uh, mammal is fully covered with the scales. So this scales has been utilized by the pangolin for the defense purpose of them. And there was totally eight species of this pangolin. This four in Asia and four in the Africa. And apart from this, there was a two types of pangolin. That is the Chinese pangolin and Indian variety of pangolin. This Chinese pangolin is one of the very endangered. This is one of the very critical uh, line because this Chinese pangolin has been utilized by the Chinese people for the medicinal purpose as well as for the meat. So the IUCN status of this Chinese pangolin is critically endangered. While with respect to this Indian pangolin, it is in the IUCN status is endangered. And most of this Indian pangolin has been trafficked through this northeastern states like of Manipur and Mizoram through, through the Myanmar to the China and many other Southeast Asian countries. So this is uh, pangolin is one of the highly trafficked animal in the worldwide. So it has been put under this appendix 2 of the sites. And apart from this, the main purpose why there was a very decline in this pangolin species is they have been utilized trafficked for meat medicinal purpose as well as the habitat loss is one of the important thing that is decreasing the number of pangolin available in the worldwide. And apart from this, the recent news with respect to this pangolin is this World Pangolin Day has been observed in each year on the third Saturday of the February. So it has recently this World Pangolin Day has been celebrated. That is the news with respect to this pangolin. And the third topic is Bondi. This Bondi is the first global blockchain bond and that has been launched by World Bank and this World Bank gave a sole authority to operate this Bondi bond is by for this Commonwealth Bank of Australia. So this Commonwealth Bank of Australia is the sole operator as well as the arranger of this Bondi bond. So this Bondi bond is an Ethereum blockchain bond that has been denominated in the Australian dollars. So the recent of this blockchain technology that has been utilized for the security purpose. So it is highly encrypted one. So it will give much of security to have transition. So thereby it will reduce this need or no, no need of this ledger has to be created. So when the transaction has been taken down. So this blockchain bond has been utilized by the World Bank to raise the fund to have much invest on this development activities. So the maturity period of this bond I bond is two years. So after two years, the amount will be redeemed. And this major fund that has been recently the raised by bond I bond through this World Bank has been utilized for the sustainable development initiatives in the developing countries. That is the news with respect to this bond I bond. And the next topic is Tane Creek Flamingo Sanctuary. This Tane Creek Flamingo Sanctuary is famous for this flamingo birds, which is one of the highly migratory birds that is visiting this India. And this Tane Creek Wildlife Sanctuary has been located in the Maharashtra state. And the recent news with respect to this Tane Creek Wildlife Sanctuary is Ministry of Environment, Climate Change and Forest has gave a note, green note for the project that has been for utilized for this Ahmedabad to Mumbai high speed bullet train corridor. So this high speed bullet train corridor has been piercing this forest area of Tane Wildlife Sanctuary, Sanjay Gandhi National Park and Tungareshwar Wildlife Sanctuary of Maharashtra. Thereby much of the forest land has been diverted for this transport corridor, bullet train transport corridor. That is the important thing with respect to this wildlife sanctuary. So then the, with respect to this wildlife sanctuary of Tane is, it is this Maharaj's second marine sanctuary that is named after this Malvan wildlife sanctuary. So this is the second marine sanctuary that has been notified by this Maharashtra government. And apart from this, this Sanjay Gandhi National Park has been famous for this leopard. And the recent issue, environmental issue with respect to this bullet train transport corridor that is piercing through this forest area is this because of in, uh, this construction activities, this is lead to have much of this sound pollution. Thereby it is going to affect the people, that by going to affect the environment and the eco species a lot. So this uh, animals that is living in this forest area is going to be suffer a lot. And apart from this, this is one of the mangrove areas. Tane Creek Wildlife Sanctuary is one of the mangrove areas. Because of this construction activities, much of this mangrove uh, trees has been cutting down. So thereby it will going to have a much serious impact on this migratory species. Because they are coming this for this Tane Creek Wildlife Sanctuary for the breeding species. So it will going to affect this much of this migratory species. So that is the news with respect to this Tane Creek Wildlife Sanctuary. And the next topic with respect to editorial topic is. National Security Act of 1980. This, what is this National Security Act is? 
this act empowers a central government as well as the state government to detain a foreigner or indian who are posing a threat to a country so that is a new thing what is this uh, national security act is. so maximum period that a person can be detained by the government is 12 months so beyond that also it can be uh, extended but with the proper rules and regulations will be applied so till the 12 months of period there is no need to enhance the, there is no need to tell on what grounds the person has been detained so if a person has been acted in a pre judicial manner under the union list if a person is having putting a threat to a security of india or they are putting a threat to a relationship in any foreign countries or they are giving a threat to a defense of the country then they will be put under detention that is this uh, preventive detention by the union government under this national security act of 1980 and in case of a state list if a person is a citizen is putting a threat to a security of a state or the public order or they are threat to the supply of goods and this essential services to the citizens of the state then they will be come under this state list and they will be put under this preventive detention of this national security act of the state so the recent news with respect to this national security act is this madhya pradesh government has put as invoke uh, this national security act, act against the three persons for the accused of killing a cow thereby they are posing a threat to the society so under this the madhya pradesh government has put a uh, three people under this national security act that is the news with respect to this national security act and with respect to this article is this now if a person is com- coming under this preventive detention under this national security act then he or she will not get any fundamental rights as per this article 22 so then there was no need to say the person detective person on what grounds they have been put under this preventive detention or the government is need not to say or put under this judicial board on what grounds they have been put under this preventive detention and the government is also need not to say under this national security act on to have a legal rights to this preventive detained people so this article 22 will deals about this rights and regulations of this preventive detention people and the history of this preventive detention laws that has been already prevailed in india is this has been started from in 1880 of this bengal regulations 3 of this 1818 act uh, that was started by this british period during the colonial era to contain this indian national movement people and uh, in 1919 this seditious most seditious act of rawal act has been passed and apart from this this has been prevailed till this independence period then after this independence period this security related to this post independence duration that is the partition of india has make to, started to have a much of the security threat to the india so this preventive detention act of 1915 has been passed to curtain this uh, preventions of much of this threat people to this partition of india and apart from this this act has been repealed in 1969 so the another act has been pa- passed in 1971 that is the mesa that is maintenance of internal security act so that has been passed by indira gandhi government the preventive detention act has been passed by the jawaharlal nehru government and this misa has been passed by indira gandhi government and in 1980 a national security act has been enacted and this act has been still no prevailing and the major concern with respect to this act is this act shows that still no we are following this colonial draconian laws so even after this independence this much of decades has passed but still we are started following this british colonial era which has put a serious sedition act on this indian national people on the national freedom movement so this shows a uh, curtailing how people freedom of right to speech and expression has been curtailed under this national security act and apart from that the another thing that with respect to national security act this act has put a vague term that shows many people involuntarily if the government a state government or central government wanted to detain then they can detain utilize this act so this act has been highly utilized misused or abused by the central government as well as the state government that is the recent issue with respect to this national security act and this vague term or in explained in this act shows that this can has to be reformed or it has to be repealed then only it will give a much freedom of people to write an expression and apart from this the recent sterilite issue shows that it is severely this act under this act is severely violating this article 19 and 21 which shows the right to speech and expression as well as the right to personal life and liberty because in the sterilite act the tamil nadu people has protest to have a right to dignified environment but they don't have it so they have protest under this act they have protest while the state government has put a national security act under that act they have put a stringent action against the people who have involved in the protest that shows how this national security act has been severely under uh, severely misused by the 
central as well as the state government. And apart from this, the third important concern with the respect to National Security Act is this NCRB, that is National Crime Records Bureau. It is this India's huge database. It is collecting the database with respect to the crime records of India. But this NCRB does not have any database with respect to the cases that has been filed under this National Security Act because there will be no FIR fire filed under this National Security Act. In spite of the, since there was no FIR has been filed under this National Security Act, the NCRB cannot have any database about how this National Security Act has been utilized by each and every state and is as well as utilized by the Union government on the people. That shows this lack of having a database will shows that how it is properly utilized or how it is misused by the government and that has cannot be analyzed. So the recent reforms we need to have with respect to National Security Act, we need to have proper database of how it is utilized and we need to have reform this act or we have to repeal this act because we already have so many other acts to contain this pre pre uh, people who are threat to the society. So we need not to have redemption of act or we need not to have a draconian law that is containing the freedom of right to expression of the people. So thereby we will end today's conversation. Thank you. Have a nice day. Like, share and comment on this channel.